Let's be honest, you've Googled, crawled hours of forums, and even digested miles worth of video content on how to make your guiding graph flatter than a sheet of paper in a printing press. What you might not realize, those lines and bars mean something more than bad guiding. First of all, ask yourself the question, do your stars come out round? Are they streaking? Are there little weird L shapes or some other random thing occurring? Chances are your constant tweaking has probably introduced more error into the system than you thought. One of the most tempting things we as humans can do is to press a button not knowing what it does. Just because someone else presses it doesn't mean you have to as well. Let's take a closer look at what's going on before you touch that dial. The first thing you need to do is know your setup. Are you using an off-axis guider or a guide scope? What focal length is your guide scope? Pixel size of the camera? The reason you need to know this is the information needs to be plugged in before PhD has a chance of getting you any results. When properly filled out, the PhD2 wizard automatically sets all the parameters for you, meaning that you do not need to adjust any other settings. In fact, by default, PhD2 when first installed doesn't even show anything other than connect, select, etc. Oftentimes I see people playing with settings such as hysteresis. This particular setting only tells PhD how long to sample for each data set. In other words, for every 10 steps a measurement is made and the movement amount adjusted accordingly. By changing this number, you either make each measurement take far too long to make a calculation or you overwhelm it by constantly resampling the data collected. Also, hysteresis requires time. Don't just turn on guiding and expect instant results or complain after 10 seconds that your guiding is off. Chances are, if you have a two second exposure, you haven't even given it a chance to work anything out. Another common number people play with is the minimum movement. Changing this number, much like the previous setting, results either too much movement or simply not enough. If the minimum movement is set high, the star has to make that amount of movement before a correction is even considered. So let's take a closer look at what's really making your guiding questionable. First, check how good your scene conditions are. Simply by eye, check to see how much the stars twinkle in the sky. If they are rapidly changing or blinking, chances are seeing or stability is questionable at best. This often results in PhD2 giving a false reading thinking that something is moving when it's actually the atmosphere making the star wiggle. One simple way to compensate for this is to use longer exposures. Your mount should be able to track at least 10 to 15 seconds with even moderate to good polar alignment depending on the focal length of your telescope. A longer exposure allows the star to wiggle in its small window and allow PhD2 to make the adjustments if the star has genuinely drifted. Since I mentioned polar alignment, let's look at that next. There's a reason it's called guiding and not lock. PhD2 is only meant to adjust out any error in misalignment. By nailing polar alignment in the first place, PhD2 will hardly make any major corrections, giving you the flat graph that everyone is so infatuated over. PhD2 even has its own polar alignment and even a drift alignment function that works wonders with your setup. Another consideration is the ground on which your setup sits. Certain surfaces will absorb vibrations better than others. Making sure that you are not introducing any unwanted movement is essential. Passing trucks or cars from down the road is enough to make the telescope shake with fear, especially at those extreme focal lengths. While I'm not suggesting you remain completely still between exposures, minimizing movement near or around the scope will help dramatically. Remember, PhD2 is sensitive enough to register you walking around up to 20 feet away. Do not try and bend the spoon. That's impossible. Instead, only try to realize the truth. This next issue can be a bit tricky to spot. When using a guide scope, you might hear the phrase flexure tossed around. In fact, it has now become the number one blame for those who simply don't know what the issue is. In short, 
Flexio is the guide scope moving independently of the main scope. As the night cools off, things can move and loosen up, causing the guide scope to wiggle around over time. The easiest way to overcome this issue is to simply make sure that the scope is attached in a rigid way. Too often do people use adjustable guide scope holders, which are relics from the old when people used to use finder scopes. The idea of a finder scope is that it has less magnification and or focal length, giving you a wider field of view to find an object. Since we are guiding, the need to use this as a finder scope is somewhat redundant. An alternative is to use an off-axis guider. This doesn't always suit the purpose if you have limited backspacing on your telescope, but most modern setups have ample backspacing to allow for such devices. This may seem like I'm repeating myself at this point, but do not be tempted to play with the settings. PHD2 by default, after being installed, does not show any boxes, dials or widgets. The makers of this piece of software have spent many years getting it to do what it does to make your life a little less stressful. It's not called push here dummy for nothing. There are also other things to consider as well, but the mentioned points before are the first points that you should consider above anything else. More often than not, technical support teams from varying companies are often frustrated by the end users messing with these settings without truly understanding what it is that they are doing. Someone else's guiding performance is not a good yardstick to measure against. The only thing that matters is if your stars are nice and round, then there is no cause for concern. Simply start PHD2 guiding, wait at least a few minutes for the algorithm to acquire enough data, do a one minute test shot. If your stars are looking good, then sit back, relax, and look up at the sky and try not to move. <laughs>